Sun, our 9 o'clock hour. I'm Mary Sloan, along with my daughter, Tony Suchka, and been a wonderful night so far, but uh, we got more to come, don't we, Yes, Tony? we're going to get to hear from sweet Rhonda Burns. She's going to share with <laughs> us tonight. And we've had um, Hannah Holloway and Morrison mm -hmm. Murray here with us tonight as well, and they were sharing um, in the first hour and in the break they're just, they're on fire. They're on fire. And they, they're ready to share more than the time that they had. So we're talking about having them come back with no script or plan and just Ooh. talk about revival mm -hmm. and what the Lord's doing. Not and if just, they miss that first hour, they can go back and look at it, you know. Yes, go back. That. And after this live is over, mm -hmm. you can rewind mm -hmm. and go back. So <laughs> Hannah's getting ready to sing a song for us. But, yeah, you can take it and just rewind all the way back to the beginning. It was awesome. You don't want to miss it. Go back and look at it. But, I mean, they're they're excited, and I'm just thinking, well, we'll just have them back again. Because, <laughs> yes. you know, revival's not just happening here in Greenville, South Carolina, or Easley, Amen. or wherever. It's it's going on all over the world. Yes, and like they is. spoke about in the first hour, um, I want to be a part of church it. is breaking out in the homes yes. where it originated yes. in the yes. beginning. Yes. Amen. So, um... I'm just excited, and I'm just excited to see them, I don't know, just doing what the Lord has called them to yeah, do. Right. Um, Hannah's been singing in the first hour, and she has such an anointing on her voice. She is a worshiper. She has her album, The Giver, right here. She's got mm. five songs on here, and she's oh. written them all, and she's getting ready to sing one of the songs that's on this album that she wrote. We're going to go ahead and give this away to the first caller. Call in. You get the CD. But don't miss this because I want you to hear one of the songs on the CD. She's going to sing it. It's called Rush.
like a flood. Your presence rushes in like a mighty rushing wind. Your presence rushes in. Your presence rushes in. song Rush is on her CD and we gave one away but um, if you would like to get her CD um, I'm not real sure how you can I'm gonna ask her when you get back <laughs> email, email Hannah so and she also has a website Hannah Holloway music.com so um, I know that that will bless you um got some people watching I see Donna Tinkham's watching I was talking about you I was telling my mom how amazing you were. So um, in the future at some point, I'd love yes. to have her on here. She's um, anointed as well. Susan Wells is watching. We love Susan, don't we? Dennis and Susan yes. Wells. Yeah. Um, sure but do. I just want to welcome you again, Rhonda, for being here tonight. Yes. I appreciate it. And um, I'm excited to hear more about you and from your heart. You were born and raised in Lincolnton, North Carolina, a graduate of the best college around Clemson University. Yes. 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 Uh -oh. Orange um, blood. Yes. yes. You bleed uh, orange, right? Mm -hmm. um, you worked with Campus Crusade for Christ for 10 years. You're married to awesome. Stephen, who you've been married uh, for 34 years and have three sons. Um, cool. You and Stephen have served on staff collectively for 30 years with Restoration slash Hope Church. Yeah. And he's now retired, but you continue to serve on staff at Hope Church in Spartanburg. Mm -hmm. So thank you um, again for just taking the time out of your schedule to be with us. Um, I wanted you to tell us a little bit about what your takeaway was with 10 years with Campus Crusade for Christ. Like what is Campus Crusade for Christ? And then to be with the ministry for 10 years. Some of the best days of my life were with Campus Crusade for Christ. I was young and single, and, mm -hmm. and Jesus was my everything, nothing else, as you sang about. But mm -hmm. um, it was just a, a time of pure devotion to the Lord during those awesome. years. And um, I went uh, to Thailand and all yeah. over uh, many places cool. in the world with that ministry. But it, the, the, my main assignment was on college campuses. And I think one of my main takeaways from those years is that people really do want to know Jesus. Mm. Oh, they put up all these facades. They act like they don't. But deep in their hearts, we talked about that a little bit a while ago, but people really want to know the Lord. And mm. I've carried that with me because um, Campus Crusade for Christ, which is now CRU, um, really is an evangelistic um, ministry, parachurch. Mm. But um, we were on college campuses and... Um, we shared Christ with everything it, that moved and breathed and some things that didn't. I mean, we were just trained in evangelism, but they were some great years. And once Facebook um, hit, you know, years ago, I started getting all these Facebook friend requests and these comments that said, do you remember me? You led me to Christ in wow, 1990 awesome. or whatever it was, you know. Yeah. And, you know, some of those I remembered, some I had no clue. But it was wonderful years, and I think... Um, just the boldness, as some of you were saying, just to step out in our faith mm -hmm. and assume that people want to hear. Yes. People need God. They need hope. They need help. Mm -hmm. And we're never meant to do this life by ourselves. We don't have the resources, and we need the Lord. And so I have a, a, a different mindset when I meet people. I don't assume that they don't want to know Jesus. I, have a, I just look at them and know that they do, and they just need someone mm -hmm to step over that threshold and, so and give him yeah. to him. I love that, that. I'm sure all that those years and being young was just such incredible training of incredible training. as you're you know older now of how you can use even what you learned then. Mm -hmm. That's one thing I have never done. I've never been like on a missions trip to another country and mm -hmm. of course we traveled I, I would say in missions all over the United States yes, um, and ministry but I hear stories like that. You mentioned YWAM. Mm -hmm. 
I know so many people that YWAM changed their lives. So yeah. That's so um, incredible. But the bigger deal is, it's a big, yes, it sounds great to go all over the world, but to walk across the street to your neighbor. Yes. And to be the, the hands and feet of Jesus mm -hmm. to your neighbor. And That's sometimes good. it's easier just to go to some foreign place you'll never be again. Right. And, and you yeah. can be bold as, as a yeah. lion, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but then we cower and we get afraid when we need to walk That's down true. the street. And yeah. That's um, uh, when God's true. put someone on our what heart. What a statement. So uh, <laughs> we really, um, we just need to assume that people really want to hear. Now you have three sons, don't you? Yes. I always wanted a little boy. Oh wow! There's nothing like <laughs> Tony. It. No, that yeah, that's it. true. <laughs> that's why. And I my, my love sister it. is was supposed to be Stephen Daniel. She's Stephanie Dana. She wanted boys. Now oh, share with us some tips that uh, you have led them through life and a walk with their Lord. Well, wow, we've had um, we just had a great parenting journey, and our our. Our sons are old, or um, one's 30, one's 28, and one's 26. My and so God. they're still, um, we met and married a little bit later in life. But um, if parenting is just, it's just a tremendous ministry, tremendous opportunity mm -hmm. to make disciples. And, mm -hmm. um, and disciples that stick, uh, disciples that, um, that have the moorings and have an anchor of their soul mm -hmm. and that they don't veer and wander. And so... You know, everybody has something that they go through in life, but um, the parenting journey has just been a real joy to Stephen and to myself. And our sons, uh, they live all over the country. They don't live right here in our backyard. Mm -hmm. But uh, we raised them. We homeschooled them and raised them to have wings and to mm -hmm. go and live life and trust God and do what he's called you to do. Mm -hmm. And so um, they're doing that, and they... Um, they love the Lord. They don't walk with God just the way mom and dad do. You know, <laughs> things are a little different. Um, They're a little different, aren't they? It is. Yeah, you probably see that even with your daughter. Uh -huh. But nevertheless, they love the Lord and they represent That's Him in right. their spheres of influence. Mm -hmm. And a couple things I would say, um, you know, we all beat ourselves up. Why well, should have, could have, would have done mm -hmm. so and so. But um, we did a few things right along the way. And I, and I learned so much about parenting from my husband and he taught me as a person how to say I'm sorry. How to say I'm sorry when I'm wrong. I was not mm -hmm. raised in an environment like that. Mm -hmm. You just let some time pass and then mm -hmm. everything <laughs> just takes care of itself. Yeah. Uh, well, he taught me in marriage how to say I'm sorry. But then we've taught our sons how to own their stuff and say I'm sorry. And now that's they good. do that. They, um, Our one that's married does that in, in marriage but the others are even have even led younger men in those similar principles. Mm -hmm. Another thing I would just say is listen. Listen. Mm -hmm. We as parents are so quick to correct. We think that's what God put us in their lives for is to correct them and to keep them on the straight and narrow. And when they veer off, bring them back. We're just always in this correction mode. And mm -hmm. many times we, we just don't listen to them. Why they do these things or they make some bonehead decisions, just ask them and be quiet and listen to them. Mm -hmm. Why they did these things, listen with no judgment. Just listen to your yeah. children, especially as they begin to get in middle school and high school. And listen with an open heart. Um, they need to be heard. Right. And so I would say, I'd say another thing is let your kids see you in the Word. Mm -hmm. Let them see you um, do your time with God. Let them. Let them catch you. Um, That's important. Um, like that. Yeah. They need to see that. I'm sure you <laughs> model that to, you, to your daughters. But um, I think they need to see your relationship with the Lord. They and don't never depend forget it. No. Don't right. depend on church. Mm -hmm. It's really our responsibility. Yes. so good. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. That is good. And I'm, I'm listening. i got a middle schooler and a high schooler. So, Listen. Um, don't be too quick to jump in there with your it, thoughts, and you should. It's hard. It's um, a hard season. Mm -hmm. You know, you think when mm -hmm. they're toddlers and in diapers, you're like, oh, this is hard. Mm -hmm. I'm tired. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. you're making all those choices and decisions for them, and now they're making their own. Mm -hmm. And I'd go back to the mm -hmm. toddler and baby years in a heartbeat. <laughs> I wouldn't. Yes, yes, I would. But I hear it gets good when they get married and have kids. And Now, oh. you've got two grandbabies now, two, right? Yes, we had one last night. Hi. So we have oh, two now. Yes. Congratulations. So we're, we have a, a grandson now. And wow. we've got some new thoughts. So we're in, enjoying that. But the times do pass fast. But um, it does come back to you. 
Now, yes. you um, have been in ministry for a really long time, both you and your mm -hmm. husband, Stephen. Mm -hmm. And most people would say, you know, church, staff, pastors, they have it all together. Everything's perfect until, you know, you work on staff and you realize everybody's uh, normal. So that's share right. with us your experience in working in ministry. Oh, it's just been, a, that's been another wonderful journey. Um, the Lord has a way of growing you up um, and really sanding off the rough edges when uh, iron sharpens iron. Mm -hmm. You know, we've read that in the Word, but it's really, a, a, it's really true. Um, but we um, have done a lot of different things in ministry. Um, I think the, um, the thing that we never veered very far from was just small group ministry, relational ministry. And um, as wonderful of the teaching that we get on Sunday mornings and the te teaching we get on podcasts, oh, that we have so many resources right now. But people need to see other people walk with God. Mm -hmm. And they need to walk with people mm -hmm. together. They yeah. need accountability. They need encouragement. Mm -hmm. Y'all, people need so much encouragement right now. And that's who God is. Mm -hmm. He longs to be gracious to us and to encourage us. That's why he blessed us with his word. And so just small, all different types of small group ministry over the years has been part of our journey. Marriage groups, uh, home groups, uh, all kinds of instructional groups, um, but just the connection, the re, um, the just the friendships that mm -hmm. you walk away with, and the strength. Um, there are many times you think I'm ready to quit. I'm ready to quit on life and Jesus. But then I think of all these people that are that are in our group that we're walking together. Yeah. What would happen? You just we don't live under ourselves. We um, we live for the gospel, mm -hmm. and so. It just helps, <laughs> being in relationship with people um, really helps you be all yeah, right. that God created you to be. I well, know that that's something important with Hope Church mm -hmm. is just community too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Do you have a favorite life verse that you'd like to... Quote. Oh, there's quite a few because we do base <laughs> our lives on yeah. God's word. But you know, I guess Psalm 27. If I had to pick out one, and it was, it would be, I would have despaired unless I believed to see the goodness of God wow, in the good. land of the living. Amen. Hope in the Lord, wait on Him. But if I believe to see, uh, you don't see it and then believe it. But I believe to see God's goodness. Oh, that sounds like a song living. for Hannah. To write. Yeah, make a song. <laughs> I don't know, Mom will write so, one in a You better heartbeat. watch it, Hannah. I'm not writing on it. <laughs> well, Hannah is going to sing Holy Spirit. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare your our living hope. Your presence. 
and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. incredible worship song um, another one of my favorites I love it just some great music tonight from Hannah Holloway we did have Betty Blackwell from Gaffney call in and win her CD so we're going to get that in the mail to you but the best news that we've had all night salvation Ooh. yes Ooh. Praise the Lord someone called in and gave their heart Teresa. to the Lord Yes, so, amen. That's Praise awesome. Jesus. And she'll get the book First Steps that will teach her some things to, in her walk. Callers enjoying the music tonight. Hannah, you're just a great blessing here tonight. Thank you for being here, Thank all the ladies. Thank you for having me. Yes. Well, we were talking with you, Rhonda, and I wanted, you know, we have a lot of calls that come in for healing, specific, you know, physical yes. healing. Um, you know, everyone's always there's different people going through different things in their life. Yes. And um, I know that your husband, Stephen, has had some health challenges, and um, you've learned a lot about adversity along the way. Mm -hmm. So I wanted you to, we've got about four minutes, to share what you've learned, and then I want you to pray over some of these people that are experiencing the same things that you have. Oh, I would love to. Yes, we've had um, quite a journey in the last um, two or three years with my husband's health. Um, Parkinson's disease would be center stage with a few other little um, challenges along the way. Um, but no, nothing hard really has ever gone on in my life, our family's life. And um, God has been kind, but the last few years it's <laughs> come in waves. But you know, God is true, and God is good. Yes. He's good, and it's not defined by my circumstances. And all of these that are experiencing physical difficulties, God is still good, and He's still yes. on the throne. And the thing that's been most helpful for me in this is that it says in Lamentations 3 that His mercies are new every morning. And so I get up every morning and I go and receive his mercies. Now they run out by the end of the day. By the end of the day, I cannot wait to put the coffee on, get out of my screened in porch. Oh, well, not, not in August, late August, but in uh, spring. But get on my screened in porch and receive those new morning mercies. Amen. Those new morning mercies where he renews my hope, renews my faith. And um, the promises of God, they're, they're just bedrock. Mm -hmm. And so we stand on those promises and we receive new morning mercies for that day. And then we come back and get manna the next day because it, it does run out. And so I would just encourage these people to carry on, carry on. Yes. Jesus said, blessed are those that are not offended in me. And there are people that have physical infirmities that have given up hope. And they're offended in Jesus and we just we can't Jesus is still good and he's he's not defined by my circumstances That's right. and we need to just step over our circumstances and still live for the glory and the gospel of the Lord mm -hmm. Jesus so I would love to pray yes. for these yes. folks yes. Uh, may yes. I hold these in my hand yes I'd love to oh these just represent mm. so many precious people out there and we hold you dear Father God, we just thank you that you know every one of these situations. You're intimately acquainted with their ways. 
And Jesus, we know that you are a God of miracles. We read about them in your word. We've seen them around us. And Jesus, I pray for miracles in these viewers' lives. You know every circumstance. You know where they've lost hope. You know where their back is against the wall. And Father, we just proclaim you as the lifter of our heads. You're, you're the one that we live for and for your glory to be seen in the earth. And we just say, yes, Lord, to your ways. And we want to proclaim your name, whether we're healed in this life or the next. But Father, we pronounce miraculous healing over our friends. We believe you can and you are able and you are willing. So we pray you touch each of these physical infirmities and bring restoration and bring life in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Want to protect yourself from getting germs and viruses? Then learn how to clean your cell phone the right way. It's a fact. Your cell phone is 10 times dirtier than a toilet seat. Gross! Now you can destroy up to 99.9% .9 of all the germs on your phone in less than 60 seconds with the new UV Clean Phone Sanitizer from Homedics. Your phone is part of your life. It goes where you go and more. It can easily pick up germs and viruses that can make you sick. Stay healthy. Our unique UV technology will destroy up to 99.9% .9 of all the germs on your phone in just 60 seconds. Just put your phone in the sleek case and turn it on and the germs are gone. Call right now to order and Homedics will give you a $20 gift card for free. You even get our 30-day satisfaction guarantee. So call right now to order. 303-336-3000. 303-336-3000.